I hope I'm recording. I feel like that's the <laughs> that's the beginning of every fucking podcast. Um, hi again. <sighs> I'm Tori Franco. This is the Tori Franco show. And uh I think this is episode 15. And I wanted to in this episode kind of just go into where the fuck I'm at right now, like literally present day, what I'm dealing with. And hopefully somebody out there can relate to what I am feeling. And I don't even know where to begin, really. I do know where to begin. Okay. Before I begin, uh, hi, this is my podcast. And <laughs> if you want to support this show... And what I do on social media, you can uh, hit the link in the description if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, my link tree is there. You can make a one-time donation to my cash app. Or if you're feeling really, really wonderful and generous, you can become a patron or go through Anchor and become a supporter on Anchor for like four ninety nine a month. Whatever you want to do, just if you want to support the show, that's how you do it. Um, I'll leave links in the show notes as well if you're listening um, and not watching. And also, coldest water. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to say coldest water. If you want to buy um, anything from the coldest water, go ahead. The link is also in the show notes and the description. Um, hold on, let me take a fucking sip. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> um, anyway, so this episode, I said I wanted to do. I wanted to do an episode of like kind of a, as like an update, um, or just tell my story. I do want to do the bullying part three. I've recorded, voice recorded, um, a segment f to the the kids, but I feel like kids are also visual they're not the they're, they're, kids um uh, attention spans aren't really that great so to only have audio I just feel like would be a disservice to the children because I feel like nobody would listen or sit around enough to listen so I want to make a video and I think I want to make the video short 20 minutes 15 minutes 10 minutes even just speaking to the kids so that's coming stay tuned for that I'm being very long-winded and I apologize. That's everything that I have to say. Uh, my story, and I touched on this on a live stream on TikTok, and, and a lot of the times, you know, this is why I love connecting with you guys because you guys inspire episodes and inspire me to, like, you know, like, the more you guys ask questions and we speak, the more I'm like, wow, that's a really good topic, you know? That's why I love connecting with you guys. So I was on a TikTok live a couple of nights ago, maybe a week ago now, and I was just talking about my story, um, about this journey that I've been on and I, and I'm still on, you know, um, and so it started, I was working at the local electric company and at the time I had not had, I didn't have any degree under my belt. Right now I have an associate's degree and I'm working on a bachelor's, um, in what at this point? I don't know. Right now I'm enrolled in the nursing program. Uh, the, this program that I'm in is a very hard one to get into. And so I'm lucky to be in it. But at the same time, I feel like I'm staring at all of these other opportunities that um, I don't want to pass up. One of them being this podcast. You know, I've, I've always dreamed of this. So anyway, let's, I'm going to take you back, back into time. <laughs> Three years ago. 2017 uh I was a very depressed actually 2016 20 2016 actually four years ago um I had just ended my relationship with my ex-girlfriend um around this time and I was in a pretty weird spot a bad place and we broke up in July of 2016 and then I want to say I, I just hit a real rock bottom place in my life and um 
I was in school full time, working full time at the electric company, making really good fucking money. And I just felt trapped. You know, I don't know if anybody's ever felt like that, where like you're just trapped in your life and you feel like you can't fucking escape from from anything. You know, um, you feel like there's no life outside of whatever it is that's consuming you, whether it's your relationship or school or work. For me, it was all three. And I felt so fucking trapped. And I was like, God. And so me and my ex, we broke up. And of course, I was upset and I was sad and um, rock bottomy. And my job was one that I had despised going to, but I fucking stayed because of the money. Um, and then it just got to the point with that breakup that I couldn't stay. I couldn't stay any longer. You know, everything was just building and building and building and the money meant nothing if I was depressed, you know what I mean? And wanted to, and dread, literally dreaded waking up. Nowadays, even when I'm in school, you know, or when I was in school, um, full time and just doing that, I jump out of bed. But when I was working at that job, I would literally wake up and fucking just want to crawl out of my skin. That's how horrible it was working at that place the morale was horrible they didn't know how to treat their employees it was just no amount of money you couldn't I'm not like that you couldn't pay me any amount of money uh to be miserable you know what I'm saying um so I made the decision to come out on a leave of absence from that job and um it was scary and I was just at a crossroads. I was reevaluating everything. You know, I was reevaluating my mental status. I was reevaluating, um, obviously, the relationship that I was in. I was reassessing. I was reevaluating my life. What the fuck do I want to do? You know what I mean? Like, wh- what do I want to do? You're 26 years old. Pick, you know? Um, and so. I stayed out of work and I became really, really depressed, so depressed and anxious that I was, uh, I had agoraphobic tendencies. And I remember seeing the first therapist that I had seen, and I'll do a fucking episode on this all on its own because that's another story time for another moment. Um, but the first therapist kind of would just, first of all, the bitch would like fall asleep as I was speaking. Like, you should not be in this profession you should literally be a professional sleeper what the fuck are you doing um like hello i'm talking (laughs) um not to mention her advice it it wasn't even advice her advice was just like go back to work and it was like are you gonna tell me how to like maybe not be anxious so that i can leave the fucking house without having a panic panic attack and then maybe i can go back to work Like, I get that the end goal is going back to work, but what are we going to do to lead up to the end goal? Other than you shoving fucking medication down my throat and just saying I have to do it. Like, clearly I have an issue. I can't leave my fucking house without having a severe panic attack and feeling like the walls are closing in and I'm going to die. What are we doing about it? You know what I mean? Like, what tips and tricks are you going to fucking give me to get past this? And she sucked, so I stopped going to her, and then I went to another therapist after her, another old lady who basically told me that I was milking it in order to stay on disability. Like, thanks, lady, that's that's what you think about my situation? Okay, you fucking twat bag. Um, and then I got, a, like, and then I finally found a good therapist, needless to say, but this isn't about the therapists. Um, the point is I was in a bad place and I wasn't, um, I was debilitating, very debilitating. The situation that I was in, the state that I was in was debilitating. And I think when you're at that place, um, of seemingly rock bottom, it felt like rock bottom, you know, and I've, and, 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 and in that relationship with that person I had reached rock bottom a couple of times you know there were a couple like rock bottom and then I go back up and then rock bottom you know what I mean that relationship was a roller coaster I reached rock bottom at least two times definitely no I, I twice twice solid anyway when you're at that place in life and you feel as though you have nothing left 
to lose because you've already lost your fucking sanity and your way you're like what am i gonna do like, at least for me it's like what am i gonna do about it what, what am i gonna do clearly no other prof- no fucking mental health professional at this point um in at this stage in the in the game is making me feel good what am i gonna do for myself and i said self you're gonna live out your dreams you're gonna try to pursue this dream you have time on your hands right now you're not in school you took you know a semester or two off you're not in work you're on you're on disability for your mental health use this time that you have wisely for things that you want to do don't stay in bed don't mope around do what you got to do so I started a YouTube channel and I started posting January at that point it was January and I made my new year's resolution to be posting at least once a week on Tori Franco um, my other channel, not the, not this channel, obviously, this is brand new, I have another channel that I don't utilize anymore, it's just Tori Franco, um, and I used to do reaction videos and stuff like that, so I posted my first video, and I got my first, like, random comment that wasn't from a family or member or friend, and I was excited, and it was like, hey, do a reaction to this singer in the Philippines, and I was like, cool, all right, so I did, and um, in a week, I had a 1,000 subscribers, and then the week after that, I had 2,000 subscribers, and I kind of just went with the flow of things, and before I knew it, I was at 10,000 subscribers, and 20,000, now the, now the, 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 um, the account, the YouTube, um, account, channel, (laughs) I can't speak, the, the channel is at 50,000 subscribers, and, um, I don't use it anymore because the followers on there know me for, you know, reaction videos and I don't really feel like I want to do that anymore. If I'm going to start up that account again or start using that channel again, it's going to be for vlogs and like other things. Um, And so I kind of just walked away from it uh, eventually. But needless to say, that was what was happening four years ago and for a good year I was like driven motivated to make my dreams a reality my dreams about music and being you know an artist a a known artist and putting an album out and stuff like that I put my first album out I had my first album release party and things were great you know um and then the momentum just died down because of me. Because essentially the YouTube channel that I was growing, the content wasn't what I wanted to make. It wasn't, I was appealing to the people that were coming to me and, and the re- requests they were making. And while I enjoyed making those videos, or else I would have never made them, um, I wanted to branch out and do other things. And whenever I did and I saw they weren't interested in that and they were only interested in this reaction video about Filipino culture, like, you know what I mean? When I saw that they were very niche and I couldn't branch out, I got discouraged and I walked away and I stopped. You know, there were people who were there for me and I appreciated those followers and I still to this day keep in touch with them because I think they're awesome and incredible. Um, But you know, I, I walked away from it. The music thing, you know, I, I, I connected with a lot of, I, I was submitting my music to my original music to blogs and stuff like that. And a couple of people were interested in um, my songwriting and my voice. And I got connected with a bunch of producers from overseas. I put my voice on one song. It went kind of viral on SoundCloud. And then from there, a bunch of you know, um, EDM producers were reaching out to me for my voice and for my writing and everything like that. And it was great. And then it became really overwhelming, um, because I was doing all of this stuff, but I wasn't doing anything for, for me per se, you know, the YouTube channel, I was doing all of those videos for the followers. I wasn't doing the videos that I wanted to do the songs that I was writing um, and the way I was writing them, I was doing for the producers that were reaching out to me and, and I was giving them what they wanted for their project, but I wasn't doing anything that I wanted to do. So I literally said, nope, er, stop. And I fucking walked away from it all. 
um, because I didn't at that point it was like mm -mm, nope and so without a sh with without a shadow of of a doubt in my brain I walked away from everything um, and everything was it, you know it's hard to build a YouTube channel you guys see you know what I mean I'm grateful for the 2,000 almost 2,000 subscribers that I have on on my my podcast YouTube channel you know that's that's a big step 2,000 subscribers is is a big thing you know and I'm very grateful for that so to have built that following to 50,000 um you know, I'll always be grateful for it. That was an experience, but um, you know, just essentially at the end of the de at the end of the day, they were only interested in one thing. And as fun as that one thing was, I wanted, I felt like I was more than that. Um, and I felt like a lot of those followers didn't see that. You know, if I had fifty thousand people following me for reaction videos, then maybe only less than one percent actually were were there because of Tori you know and this not to, not to try and sound I'm not trying to sound narcissistic but like it's a it, there's a difference between when you're following somebody for a certain type of content versus when you're following somebody because of the person you guys you guys follow this podcast because you like the personality that I am and I, I forever appreciate that. And I'll never understand, you know, when people subscribe to my Patreon account and stuff like that. Like, that boggles my fucking mind. I have something in my tooth. I'm sorry. If you're watching on the video and I'm picking my tooth, it's because there's something in it. And I can't not get it out right now. I apologize. Um, That, like, boggles my mind. It's humbling, right? So, I walked away from all of that. And I said you know what I have to reassess one more time second reassessment I'm at another crossroads what am I doing you know at that point um I'd reached another rock bottom because of my that you know situation that I was in and I was about to graduate um community college with my associate's degree and I had not considered what I wanted to do I'd considered nursing absolutely um but it wasn't ever a thing that was like set in my mind it was just like do I want to do it maybe maybe not you know what I mean it was one of those and then I um was looking at my graduation and I'm like well homie you gotta pick you gotta pick your fucking career um and so I kind of just was like, all right, let me apply to nursing schools and see what happens. And I applied to the school near me and I got accepted and I was like, okay, you know, and I kind of just went with the wave and where it was taking me at that point. You know, it was like I, I, I had applied to three schools. One of them wanted me to basically cut my right fucking tit off and um, eat it for breakfast and jump through all of these goddamn hoops that I didn't fucking feel like jumping through, you know? That should have been my first signal that maybe I should have given it more thought, you know what I'm saying, as to what I wanted to do. But at that point, I was like, I just need to get into a school. I just need to get into a nursing school. So this college that accepted me into the no nursing program um, was the first one, and I was like, great. It's a great program. I'm lucky to have been accepted as a transfer student. They don't accept many transfer students. Obviously, I got to take this opportunity, and I did. And so the last two semesters, um, I've been, you know, the last year, I've been doing the nursing thing and taking all the classes that I need. And now I'm standing at another precipice, you know. Um, well, let me let me backtrack. Um I love it. <laughs> I love science. I love biology. I love learning. <clears throat> I love reading. I love learning about the human body. Um, you know, but I'm just that type of person that I just, the more I know, the better. I want to know fucking everything. I know I can't, but I want to know about politics and social sciences and, and business and psychology. And literally I'm looking at every fucking book on my bookshelf, like in business, you know what I mean? Like I, and religion and spirituality. I'm just, I am like driven by knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Um, and 
that is where my love for biology comes. It's not, it's not necessarily a passion for me. Uh, I have a passion for people, for connecting with people. I have a passion for knowing about people and people's stories. And I have a passion and compassion for humanity. And I think that is where I, I feel I'll excel in nursing school. And obviously, because I'm a geek, I excel didactically, scholastically as well. But um, nursing as a whole was never like a passion for me. You know what I'm saying? But I loved being in school. I met so many new people, great people. And it was a, it's a, been a positive experience. Um, and then March hit. And then quarantine happened and everything shut the fuck down. And with that came anxiety about the unknown, not about nursing school, but about the unknown in humanity. What the fuck is going to happen when this whole thing first happened? It was like, we're all going to fucking die. 70, you know, like my governor, Governor Cuomo was out here like 70% of people are gonna get this virus you know and it was like oh my god like statistically I'm fucking doomed you know what I'm saying and it was just a lot of fear and a lot of the unknown and I know a lot of people out there felt the same fucking thing one minute you're just your life's going 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 you're on this beaten path and you're just like moving you know and then the next the whole world fucking shuts down in front of everybody's face you know, if you're not an essential worker, your life shut the fuck down and came to a screeching halt. And you're you're left having to face again, like, the reality that nothing is fucking set in stone. Nothing. Nothing is set in stone. One minute everything's going wonderful and dandy and you're, like, fine and you're around people and... The next minute, it's like, no, you have to socially distance and now you have to wear a mask every time you go outside and like, it was a culture shock. And so for me, it brought on my anxiety again, you know, you can, again, I always bring up Brittany, but she's the closest person to me. You can ask Brittany how fucking anxious, this girl was like, I can't even deal with you right now. Like, you need to calm down. Everything's going to be okay. But I was just bugging ball sack. And, um, in order to take my mind off of that, like almost every other fucking 30 plus year old in the world that bored in the house, in the house bored, I joined TikTok. I didn't think anything was going to come of it, you know? It had always been from four years prior, a dream of mine to fucking become a social media presence and make a difference and have a podcast I had a podcast it was called the what the world needs podcast it's still out there there are still episodes I literally filmed exactly the way that I'm filming right now maybe I'll recycle some of those episodes and put them up just like you know as like archives on this channel so you guys can see them but I had a podcast this was a dream of mine it was a dream it's always been a dream of mine to to have something like this um and and you know, I feel like I'm doing it better this time, to be quite honest, and, and I'm doing it the right way. But, um, you know, my initial dream and my initial, um, where my heart has always been is in the creative stuff like this, videos, vlogging, um, podcasting, music, writing, you know what I mean? But it's that age old tale where, every, where everybody comes to you and says, you'll never make it. You'll never make a, a living off of it. You'll, you know, you can do it for fun, but you have to, you have to have a plan B. You have to have a plan B because it's not, it's not feasible. You know what I mean? And that, that voice, that outer voice from people that are closest to you, it gets to you. And, and that was a huge reason again, why I walked away as well, you know, because it's like, oh, that's unrealistic. And then it became realistic again when quarantine hit, you know? And at first it didn't, the pieces didn't come together. The the pieces weren't being put together at first, you know? Um, I didn't think the minute I started growing a following on TikTok, like, oh, wow, now's my chance to make a podcast. It was a live stream, again, one live stream. And I was just shooting the shit with people, talking to people. 
answering questions or whatever and um this was a while back you know fucking three months ago and um somebody was like you really need a podcast and I was like wow this is a full circle moment you know and I don't believe in coincidences I really don't um you know I I, I believe that everything happens for a reason and so again I was like all right cool I'll make a podcast like we're at home now's the perfect time to to make something like this you know I have the time uh who knows what the fuck is gonna happen in the future with with the pandemic and everything like that who knows when shit's gonna open back up again fully here I am so I made this podcast the Tori Franco show <laughs> um and I continued TikToking and I continued to connect with people and the more I did it, the more the dream became uh, less of a dream and more of a goal that was reachable. Uh, and now I'm at another precipice and I'm about to start clinicals in nursing school in less than a fucking week. And I'm just, my heart's not there right now. Um... And I know nursing school will always be there. I have a fucking 4.0 GPA, you know. Nursing school will always be there. I feel like now is the chance for me to maybe, I don't know, take a semester off, figure it out, try and do the the most with this podcast. There are so many people and TikTok creators. Mama Jill Wallace reached out to me and she's like, dude, I want to be on your podcast. And I'm like, yo. That's fucking a great idea. I didn't even think of that. I should have some TikTokers on. Rhea. Rhea said she would do it. Amber. Amber said she would do it a while ago. You know what I mean? And like I feel like there's so many opportunities and so much opportunity for this show and for this podcast um, with the help of you guys, of course. You know, my patrons on Patreon. Like I can't even believe that there are people out there willing to support the show. But... um you know, I'm still, I'm still deciding. It is now Thursday night at like nine o'clock. Let me see. 9.20 at night on a Thursday. And I start school in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. In four days I start school and I'm not prepared and I'm not motivated and I'm, I'm going to give myself until literally Sunday night to decide what I want to do about this semester. If I want to continue to just double down on this and try to pursue this as a, as a dream, as a career, and make this into something and hopefully make it into something that's huge, you know? Maybe not the Joe Rogan fucking podcast, you know what I'm saying? But, but huge enough, you know, um, to make an impact and to make a living for myself and do what I fucking love doing and so that I can be able to wake up every single morning fucking excited to come down here and create, you know? Uh, and that's where I'm at. That's the exact place I'm at. And it's scary at times. I get a fucking knot in my stomach when I think about certain things. But then at the same time, it's exciting. Um, and, and anytime I feel discouraged... You guys bring it back for me. Um, I can't explain it. You know, like something, every time I feel discouraged or like, okay, you know what, it's only a matter, matter of time before I become irrelevant. Nobody wants to hear what the fuck I have to say and um, this attention dies down. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a thought in my head. And every time I feel that way, something different happens, you know? to to um encourage me to keep going like whether it's a sign or whatever I don't know but um like tonight I connected with um with somebody from TikTok and um she was telling me about a friend that she has who lives in Pittsburgh and how she's a huge fan of mine and um Hold on one second. I got to fucking put... See, I can't stand this. Give me one second. She was talking about how um, her friend is a big fan of mine and how she was um, introduced to me by her friend. And, um, you know, 
how her friend like fangirls over me and I've never had it obviously anybody fangirl over me I'm just a normal human being you know what I mean I shit just like everybody else I uh I fart just like everybody else you know um and that was encouraging and 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 having that conversation with her I felt like it needed to happen because I was in this place of like what the fuck do I do I'm still kind of there but um I kind of know where the road is is pointing (laughs) uh I gotta go with my heart as scary as that is sometimes to do I gotta go with my heart and then my mother tonight was talking to a fucking psychic and the psychic brought me up and the psychic was like people love her my mom was like yeah and the psychic was like I see children around her and my mom was like yeah (laughs) children love her like she's like Tori's like the fucking Pied Piper like for some reason kids flock to her and they're obsessed with her and whatever you know I don't understand why I'm like I'm not fucking kid friendly like every other word out of my mouth is fuck not that I I love kids and I'm good with kids but like you know I'm I'm not like a kid friendly person in the sense that I have a potty mouth you know what I'm saying like even my TikTok when kids watch my TikTok I'm like oh god I'm I, I curse like I'm so sorry to these parents who allow their kids to watch me sometimes I'm not like a vulgar you, you guys know you see me anyway um and then the and then the psychic which I don't know what you believe in or if you believe in it or not you know what I'm saying I don't know who believes in what um and sometimes I don't even know if I believe in in the shit but the psychic was like she's going to do big things she's going to do tremendous things and um she's going to be reached out to by a reality show she's going to be asked to be on a reality show but the psychic also said I was going to finish nursing school too um so that's the thing you know what I mean like every person that I've spoken to has said the same thing nursing school it's always going to be there it's not going to go anywhere you know what I mean if you take a semester off just to kind of get life going and get this going and get the show going or whatever if I take three to four months off to just try and put all of my energy into this and social media and Instagram and TikTok and and podcast and everything like that um then the worst case scenario if nothing comes of it then I just start my clinicals in January instead you know what I'm saying providing the world still isn't fucking shut down you know And that's like, that's worst case scenario. You know, okay, I'm behind a semester. But at least I gave this a try. Not that I'm expecting to fucking blow up in four months. But hey, I wasn't three, four months ago. No. Six months ago when quarantine started. I wasn't expecting to now have a hundred and almost 175,000 fucking followers on TikTok. I didn't start quarantine thinking this was going to happen. If you had asked me seven months ago where I saw myself in seven months, I would have told you nursing school, finishing up clinical or starting clinicals. You know what I'm saying? Not ever did I think that this would be where I'd be at, you know, seven, six months ago. But here I am. And I feel like I'm here for a fucking reason. Um, I feel that. I just feel that I'm here in this position right now for a reason at this crossroads at this precipice for a reason I don't know what the reason is um but I want to ride this fucking wave man and I want this to become something spectacular even if it's just 4,000 people you know even if this podcast isn't meant to go anywhere else and this is it you know I want I want to do it <laughs> um I can't see it just stopping here I really can't because of what I am willing to and ready to put into it you know I'm, I'm ready I'm ready to take all of this equipment bring it to mama Jill's house and have a sit down talk with her for an hour or two about 
LGBTQ people and religion and how she became you know what I mean like I'm ready I'm ready to have a sit down talk with Amber about her fucking life I'm ready to have a sit down talk with Rhea and maybe any other TikToker that I connect with who knows where I could go with it you know I've connected with so many people I could even reach out to Scott D. Henry and be like hey dude you want to be on the show you want to talk to me you want to just sit down and shoot the shit we'll have a zoom call and record it and I'll make that the pod. Like, you know what I mean? The possibilities are endless. And I feel like I'm looking at these possibilities. And I have these possibilities at the, 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 at my fingertips, at the palm of my hand. And I feel like I have to grab it. I can't half grab it. I have to fully grab it with both hands. And if I grab it with both hands, that means that I have to take what I was already grabbing with both hands, i.e. nursing school, and maybe put that down for a second. You know? not going to hang it on the shelf for the rest of forever, but put it down for a second. Because I would also be doing a disservice to myself going into school uh, with my mind not in it, especially starting clinicals, my first clinical semester. I feel like you got to be all in with that. And if I'm not, then I'm, it's a waste of time and a waste of money because I'm not going to do well, you know? I know myself. And maybe this is just me being distracted and whatever, easily distracted, but I don't feel that. I feel as though this is a full circle moment. Again, I had a podcast called the What the World Needs podcast that I made three fucking years ago. It never got off the ground. And so I just kind of got discouraged and walk away, walked away from everything. But here I am again now in the same exact position and it's actually going somewhere and people are actually taking to it and people are actually relating and I guess I have the demographic that I need, i.e., you know, women who actually want to hear what I have to fucking say. Um, women, mothers sisters whatever who actually want to hear what I have to say and hear the fuck I am you know with 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 a second chance at it all and this time it just feels different um it feels more real this time it feels more attainable this time and to me again I don't believe in fucking coincidences what are the odds that this is the second time that I'm able to build some sort of following on some sort of social media platform. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to build a, 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 a YouTube channel to even 10,000 subscribers. And here I was, there I was with 50,000, easy. And I walked away from it because of whatever, you know? What are the odds that now I'm on a totally new platform and now I'm almost at 200,000 followers. To me, it's like a sign from the universe. Like, yeah, you belong in people's pockets, you know? You belong in front of people. You belong speaking to people. And um, I don't know if it's a sign or just a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. It doesn't just happen for no fucking reason, you know? feel like this is happening for no reason everything's kind of full circle so na yeah now I'm at another full circle moment at this crossroads um and I'm not looking forward to the scoffing that's gonna happen from people in my life luckily the most important people in my life are fucking supportive you know um well mainly the most important people in my life um my best friend Brittany could couldn't could not be more fucking supportive. You guys always say that shit about her, you know, like I wish I had a friend like her and, and like I'm so lucky to have somebody like her in my life because any other person that I spoke to would have been like, you know, no, stick with the status quo and um and do both, you know. But unrealistically, because you can't do both. Nursing school takes a lot of time and effort, you know? Um, and so does this. So it's like one or the other. I'm only fucking human. And Brittany, every step of the way since I've confided in her, has been like, you gotta 
you got to go for your dreams. Yeah, you may struggle at first or whatever, but you got to do what makes you happy first and foremost. The money will come and, and, you know, whatever will come. But you have to do what's right for Tori and fuck what anybody else thinks. And um, I was surprised by that answer, but also relieved and um, happy to hear, you know. And then I told two other best friends today, uh, Nicole and Jamie, I told them, I was like, hey, uh, just throwing this out there. You guys let me know your truthful answers. I'm thinking of postponing a semester uh, to try and, you know, go full time with this podcast and see how far I can take it. What do you guys think? And my friend Jamie was like, honestly, I think you got to do what makes you happy. And I genuinely don't think you're going back to nursing school. And I was like, really? She's like, nope, I don't think it's just this semester. I think you're going to take off another semester and try and like continue to try. She's like, I think you're going to do what you have to do to make this your livelihood. Um, and ain't that the truth? Because, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to try to do is make it my livelihood. Um, and I'm so grateful for all of you because I can't do it without you guys. And, um, you know, the support alone is just, it's been astronomical. It's been incredible. It's been humbling. And I'm excited to see what, what happens. You know, I'm excited to look back even in three months, four months in December and see where the fuck I'm at, you know? Um, and I hope this wave doesn't fucking crash, but that is my story and I'm sticking to it. And yeah, this has been almost 45 minutes that I've been talking. I still have this shit in my teeth. Can you fucking believe it? Um, oh, it's out. It's out. Yep. It's a piece of, I had granola before and it got stuck in my fucking tooth. There's so much that I want to do for this podcast. So much. So many people I've connected with. So many people I want to interview. I want to have Deb back on the podcast. Um, and, and I don't even know what we would talk about. Maybe we'll talk about the psychic situation. I want to talk to other TikTokers who, people who want to talk to me. Um, I want to, do I want to raise awareness for serious issues uh, uh, such as domestic violence and um, sexual abuse uh, so definitely look out for that that's down the road though because I kind of want to have a panel but these are my plans and I hope and I'm hoping and and very thankful for you guys being on this ride with me I'm excited to see where it takes me <laughs> It's still in my fucking tooth. I, I got it. The other half. The other half was in there still, and I just got it. I'm so sorry about the barnacles in my fucking teeth. But anyway, um, thank you for everybody who's reached out, for anybody who's left a fucking review on this podcast. Um, thank you guys. You guys are fucking amazing. Thank you to anybody who has supported in any way, shape, or form. That doesn't just mean monetarily. Um, to the patrons, the people who've, who who are supporting on Anchor, you guys know who you are. Um, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, to my friend Kel, special thanks to you just for the simple. You messaged me yesterday and you were like, listen, your camera keeps cutting out. I really want to get you a camera. And just the thought of that um just warmed my heart. So thank you for for even wanting to fucking support in any way. Um let's see. Let's see where we can take this. You know what I'm saying? I love you guys so much and you'll see me again, obviously. Here I am. I'm like a fucking bad penny. So <sighs> peace out everybody. <laughs>